In this lesson, we are going to discuss earthquake anatomy. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the parts and movements of a fault system. Earthquakes are trembling or shaking of the ground caused by the sudden release of energy stored in the rocks beneath the Earth's surface. These are usually caused by plate movements, whether it is converging, diverging, or transformed. But some may be caused by volcanic eruptions and other geologic activities, or even man-made activities. The area in the Earth's interior where the energy stored in rocks is released is called the hypocenter or focus. The hypocenter determines the depth of the earthquake. It ranges from shallow, intermediate to deep focus. In earthquakes, the shallower the focus, the stronger and more damaging the shaking will be on the surface. The energy in the rocks are measured as seismic waves in this area. This rejected different areas of the earth until it reaches the epicenter. The epicenter is the point directly above the hypocenter. This means that the hypocenter is the one in the interior of the earth and the epicenter is the one above it. The release of energy in the rocks will create a deformation on the rocks which is also called the fault. This is a crack across which the rocks have been offset first. The zones of fractures between the two blocks of rock will be moving depending on the type of force applied. Take note that the fault line is the fracture in the Earth's crust. The fracture visible on the Earth's surface is called the fault trace. It is also defined as the intersection of a geological fault with the ground surface. Since the fault line fractured the block of the crust, two distinct parts are formed. First, there is the structure called the foot wall. The foot wall is the block of the crust below the fault. To easily remember this, Use the analogy that our feet are always on the lowermost part. On the other hand, the fractured part above the fault line is what we call the hanging wall. The hanging wall determines the type of fault movement which the rocks have experienced. If the hanging wall went down, it is called a normal fault. This is due to the extensional forces which seem to pull the two blocks of rocks away from each other. To easily remember this, the normal consequence for any hanging object is to fall down, thus the name normal fault. If the opposite happens, the fault type is called reverse fault. In this type of fault movement, the hanging wall moves upward due to compression or pushing forces. However, there are instances in which the hanging wall will not move upward even when it is pushed. The hanging wall will move sidewards as seen in strike slip faults. In this fault type, the movement is either left or right lateral. Take note that it is the hanging wall and not the foot wall which moves in fault movements. To summarize this lesson, let us review the following key points. An earthquake is caused by the sudden release of energy stored in the rocks. The earthquake and fault system anatomy includes the hypocenter, epicenter, fault line, fault trace, and the hanging and foot walls. And lastly, the types of faults are normal, reverse, and strike slip. And that ends our discussion on earthquake anatomy.